everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be looking at fetching data with React Query. If you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So at its most basic, React Query is a library that helps you fetch data in React. Um, but it does a lot more than that. It gives you uh, a lot of additional functionality such as um, handling different states, uh, error scenarios, um, retries, caching. A lot of other things are bundled into it. And I guess one of the most fundamental ideas it's trying to bring is the separation between local state within your app and server state. And there's a really good video by the, the creator React query. So I'll, I'll link that below. So today we're going to have a look at a very basic application. We'll look at the, the minimum to get up started, to get the idea of how it works. And hopefully that, that gives you enough to, to give it a go. So I have a brand new Create React app here. And we've updated the app.js. So this is just a, a function that's going to make an API call to uh, fetch my gists. And then we have the app component. Um, there's a, a use effect that runs when the app is first rendered, fetch, fetches the gists and stores them in local state. And then the, the component just renders those gists in a, in a list here. So this is absolute minimum. I think you need to get started with fetching, but it's not probably not quite enough for, uh, I guess, a real world application. You know, we're not handling things like, uh, you know, different loading states. Um, we've got no error handling scenario for if the API fails. Uh, which is probably the minimum I'd expect to see for something that's going out into the real world. Um, and then, of course, we are completely forgetting about all the additional kind of nice-to-have features, things like caching, um, things like retries, etc., which are um, going to improve the user experience, but not quite um, always uh, necessary for, for the minimum. So what we're going to do here is let's just add the absolute minimum we need, loading uh, error states, and we'll start to see the, the kind of complexity that builds up, and we'll see where React Query comes in. So... Um, in terms of loading states, you might usually have a, a status, um, again, local state to to basically track how the uh, API call is doing. So we're going to add status here with use state. Um, and in this case, we're just going to default that to loading. So when the app starts, the status is going to be loading. And then once we've um, once the fetch is successful, we want to, you know, usually you'd set the status to something like success. Uh, and you also want to handle the case where there's an error. So we'll just pop in an error here and we'll just set the status here to, I guess, uh, error. And of course, depending on the status. So if I just do, if status is loading, you might want to return. So re early return, we'll just return in this case, your loading screen or your error screen or whatever it is. So in this case, I'll just do a bit of text. So loading and error. So I think this basically handles the, the loading and error states. Um, so let's just, if we, for example, add a S there, this should fail the API call. So you can see there it loaded for a, for a few milliseconds and then um, it errored out. So this is exactly what you'd you kind of see. Um, and this is probably the absolute minimum, minimum you'd want. And we've already added another piece of local state. We've already added um, uh, some logic into our fetching, um, additional returns. Um, and if we were to add, for example, you know, either a, a button to retry or a button that you know might might uh, do additional a API calls, then we need to somehow reset all this or refetch all the data. Um, and this is all starting to kind of build up a bit in, in, in complexity. And this is way before we even reach any of the real real complicated work. So you, uh, hopefully you can kind of get a, a picture of how this starts to to build up slowly um, in terms of complexity. This is basically the, the issue that React Query can come in and solve. I think React Query, you can probably bring it in very early on um, in terms of the, the development of, of your application. It's, it's kind of super simple to use and it, and it helps a lot. So let's bring in React Query and see what that looks like. First thing you want to do is npm install React Query. Um, I've already got installed, so I'll just skip this one. Um, Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap our app in one of React Query's providers. So I'm just going to create a new component. Um, I'll call this one app and I'll rename my existing one to gists. And we're going to bring in, I think it's called Query Client Provider. And that takes in a client, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, there we go. And we're just going to render the gists component in here. So the client here is going to take in uh, a query client, and this is basically um, how you configure React Query. So all the different is it, React Query's got a bunch of default configuration, but also allows you to to update everything in terms of, 
you know, for example, the number of, of retries or, you know, the timeouts. Um, it gives you options to handle the behavior of the of the fetching. Um, and it gives you additional functions like, uh, you know, clearing cache or uh, invalidating queries, et cetera, which are, um, which are also very useful later on. So we're going to make a query client. And this is just by specifying new a query client just like that and we're just going to stick with all the, the default functionality uh, in here so that gets passed in so that's step number one Oops, we'll just also fix up the uh, api so hopefully it's still working as we'd expect so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into our component and actually make a call so the two main concepts of react query uh, in terms of fetching is uh, is basically two hooks um, one which is use query and one which is use mutation I think the terminology there comes from GraphQL, but use query is essentially for any uh, GET request, and use mutation is usually for um, uh, HTTP requests that modify something, you know, the puts, posts, deletes, etc. So in this case, we're just going to use uh, uh, the use query. So what we're going to do is we're just going to call use query, and what that does is it takes in uh, two arguments that we're going to use. The first one is a query key. Now this one's important when it comes to uh, things like caching so this is how it's going to identify um, identify the cache for for this data um, but it's not too important in this example but we're just going to put in a unique identifier um, so I think it's just uh, data and then we're going to put in a function and this is basically our API call function that returns the promise so in our case we already have our fetch gist function so this returns the promise with our data and I think that should be it. So use query is going to return a few things. So uh, status is the one I'm going to pick out. Status is going to be a string you can see here, um, a string of the status of um, the uh, the fetch. So similar to our status up here. So that could be idle, error, loading, or success. And there are a few helper methods that are going to basically are derived from the status, which you can use here. Um, we have the data, of course, uh, which is undefined at first, and then it gets populated. Um, I think the only other things worth noting here is there is the kind of refetch function as well. So if you ever want to trigger a, a, a recall, you can call this um, this refetch here. For in our case, we're just going to take the data, and we're going to rename this to gists. Uh, there we go. And we're just going to comment comment out these two, and let's just actually comment out this entire use effect. Uh, worth knowing that this use query by default will just run um, it'll just run as the, the component is loaded so it runs by default there is again an option we can pass in additional options here and we can um, tell it not to run until we programmatically do it in this case it's just going to run at, at the start which is exactly what we want um, and again the status everything else should be fine and the gists yeah so i'm just going to save this and we're going to refresh and hopefully it should just work off the bat yeah there we go so straight away we've removed a fair bit of kind of logic from our app and this is again this this query here can be reused across different uh, different components so next thing a couple of things worth knowing here is if i now um again break the break the url we'll see a slightly different behavior here uh, and might be better to see it in the network tab let's make sure you guys can see that bring this up so what you can see here is and I'll just what I'll do is I'll clear this and I'll refresh it. Is it's making the first API call to slash gists and then it's actually making another one, another two, it's loading, three loading, and then errors. So by default, uh, React Query, like I said, gives you retry functionality. So I think the default number is three, so it's try retry three times and then it fails. Um, so it goes to error, which is which is a nice little which is a nice little feature to, to have a um, out of the box. So in terms of getting started, I think that's pretty much it. You can see how simple that is. We no longer have the, the local state here. We, we have the use query that is essentially controlling our service state. So like I said, this is probably one of the most basic examples of how we can use React Query for data fetching. But the good thing with this is um, it's basic now, but it also uh, allows you to scale up in terms of complexity. So as you want to um, introduce more complicated uh, approaches to, to fetching, caching, etc., use query is going to be there. Uh, and it's going to be able to, to handle all of that. So I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully that was short and sweet. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.